Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. Got an update for this weekend. First off, I'm going to talk about how you got to be careful when you're building stuff that you don't get too carried away and you forget that at some point you you may need to maintenance things. Uh, so what happened, <coughs> excuse me, I made this little bracket. It's a little shelf, really. Got my water pump. Over there's a contactor. Contactor is just a big, uh, like 600 amp relay. Just a big relay. Uh, and then in the middle is this little logic circuit board thing. That's for my display. And uh, there'll be inputs into that for temperature sensor, temperature sensor of the batteries. And there's also a shunt. The shunt is down there. Now, what a shunt is is just a, it's a precision resistor. Now, anytime in a circuit, if you pass current through a load, a resistance there's a voltage drop and this precision resistor is tuned such that if you pass 100 amps through it it will drop 50 milliamps I'm sorry 50 millivolts it'll drop 50 millivolts now that 50 millivolt signal goes into this little microprocessor and that microprocessor goes oh 50 millivolts that is 100 amps and then it tells the display 100 amps now if you pass 200 amps through there it'll drop 100 millivolts and on and on and such and such so that's how that works <clears throat> and then uh but the problem is as cool as this looks um <laughs> it's attached with a uh, little 1032 screws i can't really get to those little 1032 screws with the grill in place and i can't uh tighten down the four bolts that are holding the grill to the frame with the little shelf in place so um what i've done is on there on the side, I've just sort of slotted those, slotted those holes. So now all I have to do is loosen the screws and then I can pull this thing straight up. And I'm gonna get some different kind of screws. I'll get some Allen heads that are square on the top and they've got little knurled thingies that you can grasp hold to, or maybe I could put a, some hex head bolts in there or something. Um, but either way, uh, it's, it's gonna be inconvenient, but it's not something I expect to have to service very often. Like shunts are pretty dummy proof. And even if, this display thing craps out on me. Uh, I can still use that shunt for any number of uh, voltage um, amperage sensing devices. So, um, yeah. So I shouldn't ever really need to get to that, but it is kind of annoying. And uh, yeah, so I made a little. I also made a little bracket for my radiator. Um, that's pretty neat. And <laughs> so the top, the top bracket. It's uh, it's just drilled and tapped straight into this cast iron here and I didn't want it to poke through the other side so I had to be kind of careful about how deep I drilled and also uh, how deep I tapped um, so I just kind of tapped a few threads pulled the tap out blew the hole out got the chips out and then went you know and kept on going kept on going until I hit the bottom on this one I was really careful on that one I wasn't as careful I went ahead and hit the bottom and kept going and broke the tap off in the hole uh, so that sucks. So so this is only held on by by three by three bolts. There's the other two down at the bottom, but it'll, it's all right. It's very solid. And um, so the way this coolant thing is going to work, the uh, pump is going to I'm going to make I'm going to make a reservoir, a coolant reservoir up here. Now my OCD tells me I need to make a coolant reservoir that spans across, goes from the left side all the way to the right side, and I could just use these two. Um, to pick up to hold it and that would be pretty cool but that's it would be a very kind of complicated uh reservoir it would have uh think of a rectangle but then like a triangle cut out in the middle of this one to, to clear that with the holes so i don't know that just ended up being a very complicated coolant reservoir now if i could pull it off complicated equals cool so i'm pretty likely to give it a shot see how it, how it works out so we'll see uh, otherwise i'll just make it on this side only and that other side i can use for i don't know something else <laughs> but anyway so it's going to come from the reservoir it's going to go down into the top of this pump it'll go that way it'll circulate through this back here this is like a, a chill plate so this has some channels that go through it so the coolant comes up and it comes down it goes up and goes down and it just absorbs the heat out of the controller here and then it'll go back down through it'll come along over here 
it'll come up into this fitting rod shell. <clears throat> it'll go through the it'll go through the radiator, do its radiator things, and it'll come up on that side and then come back into the reservoir. Now, yeah, so that's how that's gonna work. Um, it doesn't really matter how you do the coolant. Uh, typically, typically you usually pull coolant directly out of the radiator, like in your car. Uh, your water pump pulls the uh, coolant out of the bottom radiator hose. Um, you know, and that's fine. But they have kind of a different system. They have a system where uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so that's how that is. Um, and I did some other little uh, wire, um, EV conversion stuff. So I've got the little shunt right there. And then, like I said, I've got my, I'm sorry, i got my contactor there. Like I said, i got the shunt down there. So the current is going to come from the most negative terminal, which is actually on the other side, on the bottom. So it'll come from, from there, go through this little whiz bang that I made up. It'll come out of the battery up here. It'll go into the shunt right there. It'll go across the shunt, and then that'll be my most negative. We'll come out here, we'll come along, and we'll go into this here device. This is going to be a fuse, be a 400 amp fuse. Uh, it's not a fuse like what you'd see in your car. It's, um, well, looks like those. But it's going to be 400 amp. These are 50 amp. So it's going to come in here. That'll be my most, uh, no, that's not how I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. That's not how I'm going to do it. I'm going to come from the shunt, and I'm going to come directly into the controller here on the bottom. And then the positive, my most positive terminal is up here. This will come out straight down, put a clamp right there. It'll come down, and then that will come up to here. That will come up to right here. Uh, or actually, well, come to one or the other. It'll probably come to right here. Yeah, it'll come to right here, go through the fuse, and then come up into my into my positive terminal of the controller. Uh, it doesn't matter which side, which leg you fuse, as long as you fuse one of them. And um, yeah, so that'll be that. And then on this side, got a little two gauge. This is going to be two slash oh two aught uh, cabling, so pretty heavy stuff. On this side. Uh, this is just a little two number two AWG. It's going to come up, and I've got two 50 amp fuses. The uh, the bottom fuse most likely will come around here and go up into my DC DC converter. So that'll be my high voltage input for the DC DC converter. And then uh, at some point, I'm also going to have an inverter, uh, a 120 volt inverter. So that nice little piece that I made there that sort of keeps this rigid. Uh, that's going to have to go away, and I'll just put an eighth-inch steel uh, sheet, sheet metal across from that seam over to this seam, and then that inverter will sit on this, and then I'll take off of the same fuse going up into the inverter. This top fuse, this is going to be my front and rear um, accessories, call them accessories, like uh, like um, any any implements that I would put on either the front or the back that might have an electrical a 50 volt electrical motor on it or a circuit or you know, whatever. So that'll be, that'll fuse that system. And I'm probably going to upgrade this to a hundred amp because if I'm pulling a, you know, big lawnmower, a brush hog or something, I may have, you know, a 10 horse motor on there and that's, uh, that'll, that'll blow a 50 amp fuse. Anyway, so that's how that's going to be. And then also, uh, through one of these, I'll have my charger input. So whenever the charger is charging the battery, it'll go through a fuse because uh, you, you really want that. So, and then from the DC-DC converter, it'll come down, and it'll come over to this little fuse block. Got that sucker mounted on there now. A little fuse block. That'll be my 12-volt side. These here cables um, are for my power steering, and I've got a little another little fuse holder here. I think I'm going to mount it about right there, and then either the positive or... I'll probably do the negative. The negative would be kind of convenient because if I if I mount that there and do the negative, then I can just run that negative post straight into the frame because this whole this whole frame will be 12 volt. The negative ground will be frame. Fr <laughs> the frame will be the negative. Uh, yeah, negative ground on the frame. So I can just take the negative here, swing it around over here, go through the fuse, and then just go directly to the chassis. And that'll take care of the ground part. And then the, and the positive side, um, uh, how will I do that? I'll, I'll just have another 
a bigger wire going from here going across and then this I'll just have it on a on a block some sort of uh, some sort of a block I don't know probably I'll probably run these both around up here and this will be mounted up here and then the, the positive will just be a just a terminal some sort of a 12 volt terminal yeah and then these other fused accessories um, the controller itself it needs to have a fuse that contactor up there it needs to have a fuse if I have um, well when I have um, you know a relay that is um, power for a, uh, a linear actuator for a three-point hitch or something that that relay or contactor that'll need a fuse and then having this positive if I put a little stud there then I can use that positive to uh, run a linear actuator or, or some other 12 volt device out the back so that'd be kind of neat <clears throat> but having said that might be a better idea to go ahead and fuse the 12 volt side that way i can just use that fuse for the the actuator or whatever because um 50 amp if i put a 50 amp fuse in here the steering won't pop that and it's very unlikely that i'll be doing heavy lifting on the three point and also steering, pulling a lot of load on this fuse. So the fuse can do double duty for me, just to kind of simplify the wiring and keep things kind of clean. So that's probably how that's going to go. And then the, the battery, of course, is right here. This is the positive terminal. It'll just have a little, you know, like a number eight gauge cable just right there. And I made this little bracket that comes down. I did make this offset. My OCD told me to put it in the middle, but... I think that it may be handy to have space over there. I may be run. I may run stuff up through here. I don't know, but uh, better to have that space there and not need it. Um, you know, this is all going to be covered in. You won't be able to see any of it. But there could be like a, I don't know, like a little toolkit or something. I could stiff stuff something there. Who knows? Um, yeah. So that's been that. What else? I think that's it. I think that's all I've done. <laughs> that's that's it. But just um, just little stuff, just knocking things out one at a time. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it's just little things that need to be done. And you just kind of have a big old laundry list of things that need to be done, and you check them off one at a time. And, you know, this weekend I checked off quite a few of the basic wiring things. Um, next on the list, I suppose, is I'll dig down the main harness for the controller and really turn this thing into a rat's nest of wires. Um, it's not that bad, actually. There's not all that, not all that much to it. For that controller, you've got a 12 volt hot at all times. You've got a key switch, uh, 12 volt. You got ground, of course. <clears throat> you got uh, a throttle. So there's three wires from a from a um, from an accelerator um, potentiometer, and. Yeah, I think that's it. That's really all there is to it. There's not a whole lot of wiring to it. And, um, yeah, <laughs> that's really all there is to it. Um, it may, mm, I don't know, there's a, there's a few wires that come up to this little display right there. Yep, that's uh, that. I may, I don't know if I'm going to keep that display there. I might like to have a different one there. I don't know. This controller has a CAN bus, and... I'm going to have a BMS on these batteries at some point, and they're going to have a CAN bus also. And I may try and find some gauges that run off the CAN bus. One of them would be like a, an amp meter, and the other one would be a state of charge meter. The BMS could tell me what the state of charge is, and then the amp meter I'd have, um, well, I'd run it off that shunt, actually. The BMS would tell me what the amps are, too, but... Uh, yeah, I may end up doing that, and I'll end up plugging that gauge hole off and then do two similar small size gauges side by side. And then that gauge there, I could actually, um, this is going to be sloped, this this panel right here, it's going to be sloped. It has to be, because this one's going to be sloped, and then there's some turning and articulating and stuff, so this is going to be sloped to, to keep things out of the way. At the top of that slope, I could end up just putting that gauge right there. I don't think it's waterproof, so that may be a problem. I don't know. Uh, okay, well, that's it for now. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.